Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. This is the uh, wetlands meeting for Constitution Boulevard, just to be correct. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Michelle, um, uh, Terry Gallagher from our office will be 
uh, at the meeting live, as I assume other members of the commission are. Is that correct? I thought it was all Zoom. Okay. Okay. There we go. Hi, Michelle. She can't She should. Hi, Michelle. Let's see. Let me... Hello. <laughs> has, the host, has the host joined yet? Uh, you. Uh, Our internet connection is on. Okay. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Yeah, she's saying it's saying it's uh, the network bandwidth is on her side. So. <laughs> Roll call's been taken. Okay, um, I'll call a meeting to order. Special meeting of the Inland Wetlands Commission um, to discuss permit application 2113. Constitution Boulevard extension, Constitution Boulevard South. A proposal to extend Constitution Boulevard from Bridgeport Avenue to Kings Highway, the road construction within a regulated area and upland uh, review area. Uh, uh, now you prompt. Is there somebody here to read? Okay, is there someone here to uh, sure. discuss? I keep your name My name is Paul Tomorrow, Public Works Director for Shelton. Uh, I'm not sure if you most of you do know the history of this project and how many years it's been going on. This particular phase will bring from Bridgeport Avenue to Avenue up to the mass property and then ultimately up to the end of the mass property. Eventually, of course, it goes out all the way throughout 110. Again, so we'll be out to one eighth of this project eventually. And then we already got out to one ten. The original plan, and I I have gone to to uh plane zoning to change the alignment of the road because the original alignment came off of Port Avenue, here off to the right, went through wetlands, went across Black Hill, went through another wetlands, and then continued on. We would never have gotten built long term that way. Plus our current engineers advised us that the state would look frown on bringing it in and take such a quick turn and going up. They would want the road to be, and it was not aligned with the road going across the bridge, continue on the Constitution, and they would require that. Uh -huh. So, what we did is we shifted it, and I had it go straight through. So, we had an 824 for that. And then last week or the week before, I went to them to have Black Hill reduced in height. So, the grade would be reduced. Reduced dramatically on Black's Highway to allow for lesser of the grade of the new road coming. 
So John has been meeting with the Carlin Dallas with Terry Gallery, who's here from the Carlin Dow, and showed how we realigned it and how we avoided all the wetlands. So we are really minimizing the amount of wetlands that you would impact in any event. So this is the neatest way to go through. So what we're looking for now, of course, is your blessing to proceed on. We expect to be going on a bit shortly, but that would also be changed if we had to do anything differently. But I think that Terry can, can rest, you know, give you a presentation that'll show you that this is the right way to go. This is Terry Gower. Hey, um, hey Paul, um, before, before Terry starts, uh, greetings, everyone. This is Ron Nault. As, as Paul said, we're uh, DeCarlo and Dahl. I'm a professional engineer and principal of the firm, and Terry Gallagher is a professional engin engineer and senior engineer expert in water resources and drainage. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you. I'm in Chicago. My daughter's getting married in two days, but uh, we've been working long and hard on this project with the help of, of city staff. And I just, as, as Paul said, just a quick intro. Um, as we were hired to design the roadway extension uh, that's been long in the planning, uh, we're here before you today for the 31, 3,100 foot extension to and through the Moss property to the Western edge, as Paul explained. In developing the proposed roadway alignment, we worked very hard to first uh, minimize any wetland impacts, first selecting a route that avoided wetlands where possible, and then where they do, do exist to cross them at the narrowest spot. Um, as we will show you in a minute with Terry's detailed presentation, we've achieved this avoidance minimization uh, and especially compared to the city trust design uh, from long ago. Uh, we've all, also proposing significant wetland mitigation efforts. Terry will show where we plan to create large new wetland areas far exceeding our impact areas. In addition, we propose state of the science stormwater management where we use grass swales for collection of runoff, but also they act to remove pollutants. And then we discharge to stilling basins with sediment four bays to further remove sand and silt and pollutants uh, prior to discharge to the wetlands or water course. Um, so Terry Gallagher will now go through in detail uh, the, the, the project plans. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Terry, no. Uh, are those PDF plans available? Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, I, I can use the boards if the commission likes. Uh, Dan put them on the city's website. Um, so um, I gave him the disk. Uh, he put them up on the website. Um, from there, I don't know how we access them through this system. I've, I've got, I've got, boards. I've got okay. a point on boards. Okay. Yeah. That's right. We like that. We know these work in our office. Yep. And a lot of backups. Well, that's pretty good luck with Zoom. You do a lot of Google Meets. Now, uh, IT question for the anyone that is here. I'm still looking at Ron. And if this is supposed to pick up who's ever speaking, it's supposed to be on the video. It's way up. So I don't know just how we got it so that when, when, when Terry's talking. You should be able to shut him off. If you grab it, just bring him out to the grab it. There's three somewhere in the bottom. Well, that would be if he had a, uh, oh, something. Yeah, terrible. John, so, don't even start. No, I'm not going to do that. Like, I just want to do that. Well, because otherwise, nobody's going to be able to see Terry. Participants, down the bottom. See the participants? Yeah. Click on that. Well, that's the people that are watching. Right. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. Other, right? yeah. yeah. But this is what you want to see. All right. Click on it. Click on it. No. There we go. There we go. You're all right. Um, I won't turn this. Make sure it doesn't work. There you go. You're in good there. Nice. Nice. No, because Carrie, you're over here. All right. Okay. This side. One side, one side. Sorry. One side of the other, I guess. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll try not to stand too much in front of the board. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, my name is Terrence Gallagher. I'm a professional engineer with Carl and Dahl. And we have offices in Mary Town. We're here on behalf of the city of Shelton. Uh, and we've been designing Constitution Boulevard West, is what we're calling it, because we have Constitution Boulevard South going down to 110, and we have Constitution Boulevard North up by the high school. So. We went with West to describe this. As, as Paul discussed, 
the project starts right you see the big rock cut on Bridgeport Avenue opposite Constitution Boulevard South where that exit 13. Um, you, you came out of Constitution Boulevard, you take a right, you go to downtown Shelby, take the left, you go up toward Mills Rock Road. It's going to start there and extend all the way up through to basically where Old King's Highway ends, off behind Bristol Drive and Thomas Drive, that neighborhood. It doesn't go that far up. Um, but it stops just short of that. It goes all the way to the Moss property. Um, and what I just want to do is give you an overview of the presentation. You've got all the drawings. You've got a very nice wetland report. Um, but obviously, I haven't had a chance to look at it or anything. But at least I can tell you what things are. Make it easier for you to review. And then we can answer whatever questions you might have. Um, the whole point of this project, as long as I live here, um, this is down the city's uh, list of capital projects to do because it not only creates a good, Shelton has a lot of good east west roads, but not a lot of good north south roads, as people know. Um, so, in the mornings, in particular, there's congestion at Isaac Glass Road at exit 11, there's congestion at Old Stratford Road, there's congestion downtown, there's congestion at Huntington Center. The idea is that if when all these pieces get connected up through, this road would extend up to Mills Rock Road and join up by the high school. And then there's other right of ways that have been set aside for this to go up north to 110 in the way hills. And ultimately, if the city gets all these pieces put together, you would have a way for people to get down to exit 13, which shouldn't get as much traffic as exit 12 on Route 8 in the morning. They wouldn't have to cycle through downtown Shelton for all the lights. You wouldn't have to be stuck at uh, uh, the, the green and Huntington in the morning. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's designed to be a main through road, and it's also designed to allow the city to do some development on the Moss property, which the city originally bought from City Trust to uh, control what went on there when City Trust went bankrupt or uh, yeah, they, they lost control of the property. And it's been discussed for a variety of industrial uses, uh, movie theaters, uh, mixed uses, everything in the world. Right now, the city is looking at industrial uses that will bring in jobs and taxes to the county. Um, for part of that, you need to have truck access. So the, the new road is being designed for the climbing lane. And it's being designed to accommodate trucks. It's an arterial road. It's not a subdivision road. It's a, it's a wide road, four lanes down at Bridgeport Avenue, turning lanes. And then most of it, two lanes in each direction with a climbing lane going up the hill. It's a very steep grade change up from Bridgeport Avenue. To Old Town Road. Um, there's multiple parcels that are involved. Um, they total about 78 plus acres. Uh, as I said, the city owns a city trust parcel on Bridgeport Avenue that it acquired when they, they, they purchased the Moss property. Also, a smaller city parcel that's directly on Bridgeport Avenue. It's um, a sheet of uh, uh, appraisers. Uh, uh, there's a parcel uh, owned by the same as Ray Kravinsky at uh, Blackstone Road that the city is in the process of acquiring. There's another parcel uh, now forming Churma on Blackstone Road that the city is in the process of acquiring and the Moss property. The, the, I'm sorry, let me just go up to one second. The sure. parcel that you're referring to, so if you rise, go left or rise, and it came higher to the right hand side. Where the road was going to travel through is now a developed parcel, about three, three and a half acres, or somewhere in that area. Uh -huh. All right, so that's where the parcel is. So parcels for so, um, so the, those parcels are respectively 3.3 acres, uh, 1.8 acres, and 5.1 acres, and the last property about 68 acres. So the city currently controls most of the right away area for the road. Um, in your set, drawing set, you have two existing topo maps. Uh, first one is EX1, it's existing conditions. And this has Bridgeport Avenue down here on the right hand side and Constitution Boulevard this way. Burying Ground Brook is going through a pulmonary Constitution Boulevard going north downtown to the north in this direction. Um, uh, Black Hill Road, it's labeled like Cat Street. Cat Street stops down here to the Bottom of the drawing goes. Black Hill Road goes this way and goes to the north. And then this is the Moss property over here on the left hand side. So this has that little shelter parcel I talked about. It's larger parcel. Nesky parcel. Um, this is the Churma property. 
And basically the old road was designed to come in, as, as Paul mentioned, at almost a Y angle opposite Constitution Board. That's horrible for traffic law. And um, the DOT would really not approve that in today's uh, system because you can't, you're A, you're always going to look over your shoulder to see who's coming, and B, you can't get the, the traffic signal to work properly because you have to get extra time for everybody to execute those maneuvers. So it cuts down the capacity of Bridgeport Avenue and Constitution. I think everybody's aware how busy that intersection is. Um, so the new design is going to be a straight line coming in opposite Constitution at 90 degrees. So um, within the Tobo, we uh, show the houses. We have the wetlands in blue. Uh, the wetlands are numbered one through nine, and that ties into the soil science report by William Kenny Associates. They have a description report of every wetland, and they're all here on the Tobos. Um, this area was flown. Uh, with photogrammetry for design of the road. So it's got recent topo and all the flags and other supplemental features were field located by the Carbondale Dahl survey team. So they're all highly accurate um, wetlands. Uh, we're showing the 50 foot uh, water course buffer on some of the wetlands because they're classified as intermittent water courses by the soil science. In places where it's just a wetland, we're showing the 25 foot wetlands buffer. And along Bearing Ground Brook, we have a 75 foot uh, water course setback at Bearing Ground Brook. So we have all those in there in conformance with the city properties, uh, city requirements. Um, the, the city property that the city acquired from Sea Trust is mostly a depressional wetland, wetland one, and there's a little intermittent water course. It's about 12 feet wide that comes down here and then go drains back into the ground. There's no actual drainage down here. Uh, every time I've been out there, the water seeping in, I think I've seen it once flowing, follows a ditch that goes down here and there's a 36 inch pipe on New Bridgeport Avenue to Prairie Ground Brook that's near the Sheehy uh, real estate office. Crazy good road. There's also other drainage here on uh, Bridgeport Avenue that drains across the road. It's mostly quite in Bridgeport Avenue. Um, Wetland two on the west side of Pat Street is basically catching runoff from up, uh, up above. It's um, it's got a larger our soil science went in and they didn't know exactly where the property lines were when they flagged it. So in a couple of places they're a few feet short of the property line, or in other cases they went over the property line. But this is the Seminary Development property. It's actually got a nice um, larger wetland, but there's a small intermittent water course that comes through the back of the churma piece and then. There's just a depression where it goes into the ground. There really is no defined water course or drainage pipe out of that wetland. It's a depressional wetland. Um, the other wetlands that are on the project are on EX, EX1. On EX2, and that is the Moss property. It's a little bit bigger scale, but this shows that. Wetland two that I just pointed out, and this is the property line for the Moss property. It's a steep hillside that comes up under the Moss property. When there's a series of ridges that are going north south, and we're trying to, try to have a through road that's going south uh, west to north uh, southeast to northwest. So we're crossing a bunch of ridges and wetlands as we're going through here. Um, we located uh, nine different wetlands. There are other wetlands that are on the south area of the property that were nowhere near the road or the north area of the property that were nowhere near the road. So we didn't have our soil scientists go out and check those at the time. Um, just to be thorough, so we have every wetland on the Moss property, we're having them update their wetland sliding, but nothing, they, they located everything anywhere near where the road's going. So there's a very good idea of all the wetlands along the road route. Um, let's see, there's um, so that's the topos, uh, and again, I said everything's kind of going in ridges. So there's there's bridges over there. This is Old Kings Highway here, and here we got we have Regent Drive and uh, Falmouth Drive comes back this way, and then this is that area that Paul is referring to at the end of uh, Old Kings Highway. So this is drawing RP one. It's our roadway plan, and it. it 
clearly shows uh, Bridgeport Avenue, Constitution Boulevard, and the new proposed boulevard. Um, we're coming in straight and we take some slight turns to try and get around some of the bigger wetland quarters. As Ron Dalton mentioned, we tried wherever we could to avoid wetlands. There is a small wetland here, wetland eight, that is, I think, it's about 1,015 square feet that we could not avoid. Uh, there's, a, there's a larger wetland to the north, wetland three. It's actually got a nice vertical on it we were trying to stay away from. And there's a larger wetland in the south, wetland seven, that's got uh, a nice wetland in it. Um, and as nice as wetland three. Um, Bill Kenny's report actually um, noted what he found in each wetland where there were um, attractive species. Wetland two and wetland one both have a lot of invasive species in them. And they each have, uh, whenever you go out there and walk, you'll see like remains of old buildings and tires and debris and stuff like that. These are these are nicer, more pristine natural wetlands when you get up in your new site. So we're trying to avoid those. And then we go below wetland four, which has a little vertical in it. We're trying to stay away from that. And we go above wetland five, which is a finger that goes into a little infant water course and drains down to wetland six. And that's got a little pond on it that drains down towards some of the kind of in to the south. So we avoided that, and then we have a, a temporary cul-de-sac here that's just before you get to Old Kings Highway. So future extension of this road would go continue toward Nels Rock Road and Route 108 and come out by the dog park uh, opposite the road to the high school. Uh, and there are places behind Greystone where the road's already been dynamited and cleared for right away, but it's grown back in over the years. And other places have been set aside for road right away along the court. So it's, it's, it's been on the city's capital books for a long time. And as each job came in, they each had to contribute land or improvements. In some cases, like Greystone, they actually did the earthwork to rough it out. It's just it's grown back in with saplings and things now. So, um, that's the overall uh, alignment. Um, what we're trying to do with the road runoff is uh, in places where there was a, a, a ravine that was draining and feeding the wetland, we put a cross pipe underneath the road so any water on the uphill side would still get to the wetland so we wouldn't be drying it out or starving it. Um, but we're taking most of our runoff down here to get around the vertical pole and we're going to discharge some water toward wetland three. Uh, in here, we're going to put a stormwater basin and landscape the bottom of it in wetlands plants so it had a filtering effect. It would just be a trapezoidal riprap pit. It would actually be attractive. We didn't count that toward our wetland mitigation. That was a stormwater feature. And the road continues down. Uh, it's constant grade. Uh, and when we get to the base here of the turn piece, we're going to take some of the water off and have a stormwater basin and filtering basin that Ron mentioned. So it would still contribute water to the wetland quarter, but then we have an overflow structure here. So um, there wouldn't be too much water because we didn't want to impact the neighbors on either side. Uh, and bring that back down here in the trunk drain. And then where a lot of the stormwater from this wetland one goes to this 36 inch pipe that's right here near the Sheehy property. Um, that would put on the uphill side of the core, the culvert that goes through the Constitution Boulevard. So we're actually going over here on the downhill side of the Constitution Boulevard and where they have an existing pipe that goes down to Burning Ground Brook now, we were going to remove that pipe and upgrade it. So that way we wouldn't be putting in water on the uphill side of this culvert. It'd still be going the same place it always goes, but we'd be upgrading uh, disturbance along Burning Ground Brook where there already is a riprap channel. There already is a 15 inch pipe. There's already a head wall and everything. So we'd just be doing the work right there in the same place with stormwater treatment detention that Ron mentioned. So that's the overall project. Um, the, the grade is challenging. There's a number of profiles in here, but this is 3,000 linear feet of road. It's almost six tenths of a mile. And the road right away varies from 104 feet to 92 feet. Uh, pavement is 60 to 48 feet. So it's got two full lanes and a climbing lane for trucks, uh, six foot shoulders. Um, the roadway area is 6.4 acres. So out of the um, 78 acres of the whole project, 6.4 acres is roadway right away. 
Um, the city had the right to spin off whatever parcels along the Moss property they could for future development. That would be a separate application. It's just for the road right away. Um, but we have a number of profiles in here, and I think they help you visualize what's going on in the project. This is profile one. And this on the left hand side is Bridgeport Avenue, you labeled where all the intersections were. This dashed line is the existing grade, and the proposed heavy line is the proposed grade. Um, there's a significant rock top right at the entrance to Bridgeport Avenue, as people probably notice if they're sitting at the light. It's about a 12 foot cliff. So this would have to be cut in. There's got to be a flat landing at the bottom, and we start climbing, and we can't. Go straight up right away, but we do climb at a nine percent grade. It'd be very similar to what you see on Constitution Boulevard South if you come up from Florida Avenue if you're driving up the River Road. There's a climbing lane on the right hand side. It's, it's a steep grade, but it's there so trucks can go up. So at that first wetland, we have the wetland crossings here in bold. If you're looking, that first wetland, we actually have to do a cut of about um, 14 feet. So because we don't want to dry up the wetland when we do this cut. We're going to pick up the drainage there, but we're going to have to uh, prepare a detail showing basically a little mirror there, so we make a little dam on top of the rock cut, so we're not draining the wetland out and drying it out. It's a narrow wetland. It's a narrow water course, uh, intermittent. It's about two, three feet wide, and it's in a 15-foot wetland quarter. It's, a, it's as narrow as we could get it, but we are cutting here. That's one of the few places we're cutting through a wetland. The, uh, as you proceed along the profile, this is uh, this is the center line of Black Hill Road right here. As you proceed along the profile, you're going to the Terma property, list the property owners right in the drawings, and you get to wetland number two, and we have a 10-foot fill at that wetland. So that's where we're doing the thing where we're, we're going to dump some water off the side, do the filtering basin. And that's also where we're going to have a lot of our, our wetland mitigation is at that wetland two area. And the reason for that is that is that area has got seems to have a lot of invasive species and it's somewhat degraded. I mean, it's it's people's backyard going in the woods. It's not a bad area, but it could be improved. So that seems to be one of the areas where you weren't having to take out something that was nice that the nice old people forced to do wetland mitigation and see where the soils were the best for that. Um, profile two going, you're continuing up, you're still at nine percent. 9% and you go to 6% and get into the, the Moss property and start to level it out a little bit. This is wetland number eight. That's its little pocket I was talking to you about where, it, where the road's going through the middle of it. And that one, we have a 10 foot fill. And again, it's about a 14 foot wide pocket. It's not big when you see it. It's not really connected to anything, but it's in a saddle in between two pieces of rock. So you can see this piece of rock and this piece of rock, and the road's going through it. So that's why we have it. Fill that one. There's really no way to avoid that. Uh, and then the grade, this is profile three, the grade is still going up, it's still going to the Moss property. There's no wetlands that we're crossing there. Um, and this is profile four, where we start having a high point around the area of uh, Old King's Highway. This is the Old King's Highway right away. Um, and this shows the end of the road at station 39 plus zero. This is the center of the cul-de-sac. So we're stopping right before Old Kings Highway, and we're stopping before the uh, high, future high point that goes downhill from there as it goes north. But there would have to be a rock cut and a rock slope at the top of that temporarily to stabilize it. Um, and then this is the profile, profile five, profile one, Black Silver Road, the, the the buying thing is a little screwed up. But in that case, Black Hill Road, there's a 14-foot um, cut that's going to go in there. So it's because we're we're limited to how steeply we can climb from Bridgeport Avenue, they're going to have to um, rebuild portions of Black Hill Road for about 230, 280 feet each direction. So it, it, it is a, um, it's not in a wetland setback, uh, but it is work that's going to be going on here. But we're rebuilding existing roads and we'll make them nicer and a bit kind of erratic with on, on those on that street. Uh, there's some typical sections in your report. Like I said, um, there are arterial roads, so 
down at Bridgeport Avenue, we have turning lanes. We have some work on Bridgeport Avenue. We're redoing the signal to um, address the DOT's needs. When we get further up in the site, we have two a lane in each direction with a climbing lane for trucks and with shoulders for bicycles and pedestrians. We don't show sidewalks right now, but we have grass shoulders on the side of the road that could take them in the future and take utilities and stuff. Um, so we've included all that in our grading limits. Uh, this is a, a profile, typical two. It's a cross section of wetland two. And in that case, we add retaining walls and we steepen the slope to limit the amount of filling in the wetlands. So we're trying to minimize the impact of the wetlands where we could. Um, but that's why we have retaining walls there. And uh, there are also a series of wetland um, blow ups showing our um, wetland impact plans and wetland mitigation plans. So these are one inch equals 40 blow ups drawing WI1. Okay, uh, so the areas in pink that show the areas where wetlands are being built and the cross hatch areas are the 50 and 25 foot setbacks where we're doing work in the road. So we have that in the application package, all square footage for those. The areas in green are the three places that Ron Nall was talking about earlier where we're going to have wetlands mitigation. And it's basically along this intermittent water course on the upstream and downstream side on the property that the city owns and controls up in Simmey property and down to the Nikita property over there. So um, we basically are, have less than 5,000 square feet of total wetland impact on the project and we have almost 15,000 square feet of wetland mitigation proposed. We have about a three to one ratio for mitigation, um, which we think is, is reasonable. Um, like I said, the uh, drainage, road drainage is going to get picked up so that we'll have to put a little dam and we're here at the top of the rock cut for wetland number one. And that runoff will now be taken, going through an oil separator, go through a grass swale, and then discharge down to Fairing Ground Brook, where I said we have that one well area where we're rebuilding pipe. The existing 36 inch pipe is still going to remain. We're not altering anybody else's drainage from Pat to Silver Road down. Um, we're just picking it up and making sure it gets down to the brook in um, good shape. And we are going to have um, the drains are going to be equipped with sediment floor bays. They're going to be landscaped with wetlands in the bottom. They're going to have mechanisms to let groundwater cycle through so they can keep feeding the wetlands. So we're trying to maintain the existing hydraulic balance there. Um, so there's, and these are blow ups, so they're easier to read than the one overall plan. Uh, and I gave John two full size sets. If people want more sets, we can give you more. Um, everybody gets your new set. This is that upper wetlands eight that I said we were filling in. This is um, WI2, the other wetland impact plan. So this is that second stormwater basin I was talking about. We didn't count this one as mitigation, but we, we plan on landscaping it the same as the other one. Uh, that gives us another um, almost 7,000 square feet of stormwater basin, and that would put us at a four to one mitigation ratio if we counted it, but we haven't decided to do that. We do have, um, uh, we have some drainage coming into the road from up above that we are picking up with drains at the top of the cut and bringing them down. So this is all Moss property proper. So this is being set up so somebody could come in with a factory or a warehouse or an office building and they could find it in the future it is its own application. Uh, we did have uh, the road fill kind of chase grade down a little bit. Uh, we actually have 21 square feet of filling of wetland number seven. I told John that might be an area we could revise if we look at it a little bit. Maybe we see the slope for doing the cane wall and in places where we might be able to fine tune the wetlands filling. We did put a retaining wall up here at wetland five, so we weren't impacting that. Uh, and we are saying this the road will have all underground utilities, uh, water, gas, sewer for connection on through and connection to the target. Um, we're, we're stopping there. We, we're not touching wetland number four, which is one of the rental pools. We're going to go to work in the setback area to the south. Right? And then uh, 
Wetland Impact 4, there's nothing there, but this shows the road would continue on, go behind the Hermitage, go behind Baskin Ridge on its way up toward um, 108 and the um, Nelson Road intersection. And these are wetland mitigation plans. We blew them up. We put some typical sections on how we're going to be doing crushed down and grass line floor base. So it's a little bit. These are 20 scale blow ups of just the wetland mitigation areas. Uh, we're going to add more planting detail and things like that as we progress the design. But this shows you where the areas are and how it fits around the edge of the wetlands. We're not going into the wetlands, but we'll allow us to clean up some invasive species and replant out the native vegetation. Um, we walk here on WN2 of the second stormwater area with um, showing four bay and showing groundwater recharge. So we're not having a direct discharge to the vertical pool, but we're using an indirect filtering method to avoid impact. And lastly, uh, we included some of the plans from the earlier approval from City Trust in 1989. The, the, the uh, road right aways and locks were actually put on the final land record. So, the existing and non property, we'll have to um, distinguish them with, with this road design. But this shows, as Paul mentioned, they had a, they didn't, they weren't looking at acquiring extra property to do this to get a nice straight alignment. So, that's the big advantage the city is doing done now. Because um, it's going to make it a lot easier to get approval from the DOT. And this was the, the Y shaped interchange. But well, what they were doing is they're going to the north. So, this is wetland one. They were going toward the widest portion of wetland one and basically filling that all in. Same thing, crossing this and going on the Simonetti property, we had the widest portion of that wetland that's up there and going right through the middle of that. Um, so, this is a much, although it's got rock excavation and it's got impacts. Uh, Earthwork impacts, it's got much less wetland impacts than what the original plans had that are on file of the city. And this is the roadway where it comes up, and this is uh, wetland three here, and this is that little thing where wetland eight where um, we, have, we have the road going through it. I believe this is wetland seven here. So they have other places that are crossing wetlands, but it, it I, I we have more of drawings if you need them, and John's got a good set of them too. But we just put them in for um, reference just so you can have a comparison of what was already approved and what was on file and records. Terry, yes, uh, just a quick question um, uh, because I think it's important in the scope of re reflecting on the history of the city trust versus the current plan and how it's improved and changed. Uh, I know in the old file. There is a, uh, a record of the amount of wetlands disturbance with that application. Um, do you have that just so that we could stick to the record to demonstrate less than 5,000 square feet presently? And I, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but I know it was more substantial. And if, if you don't have that figure quite handy, that would be a good one to state for the record at the next meeting. Well, I'll tell you, it certainly is a lot more. Yeah. You, you hit more, just before you hit black, so you more, you hit more. And the whole oh, project. yeah, and, and I, and I think for, you know, there's only one commissioner that yeah. is, is still on the board that was on the- Well, you can look at the Simonetti property and just see what's the spirit there. Yeah, we can. And we can, that is, that's more than the entire project. Correct. We, 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 I believe it is on the order of something like 60,000 square feet, but I'm not 100% positive. I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't guess that it wouldn't be enough yeah. less than that. I mean really that sounds like all those less. It's so, a, it was quite it's a big improvement and and also um the uh, uh having the amount of mitigation because at that time I don't believe in the late 80s, mid 80s, there wasn't as much idea about mitigation as we've seen in subsequent uh decades. So that's also something that's not and only are you never, is it, so you never build the way it was designed, you can never build it. There's no way. I mean, you you'd be here for 20 years trying to figure it out. I mean, possibly never would have been. As soon as we looked at it originally, we got a firm. We looked at it. And said, what is this? You know, but it was done because that was the land they were acquiring. They were just following the least resistance. They were going through the land they could acquire the easiest and going around. That's not the way it built up. Now, unfortunately, that's the way it was. So we looked at that and made that change initially right away, even though. 
that we would have a steeper grade. So we took care of it. Green went to black silk. And then that is mislabeled, by the way. It is black silk all the way to the corner, going down to Cow Street. So drawings will be corrected. Uh, it was explained to uh, planning and zoning who went there for the 24. We explained to them where it went. So just a, it's, a, it's not a big deal, but it's important. Um, the only other thing I would throw out is um, part of the uh, goal of this is to have a good uh, north south artery for the city of Shellis. It's not just to have a driveway and an industrial park. This will be a driveway to an industrial park commercial development, but it's, it's part of an overall plan to have a good tour road. You don't want to have something you come on intersection and you don't stop and like look over your shoulder. You want to have safe interchanges where you can look at 90 degrees to each other. You want it to look like 108 by the high school. You want it to look like River Road and Constitution Boulevard South. You don't want to have bizarre ones. It's not a subdivision park. Um, and also, there are three burnout pools on the project. Uh, Wetlands three and four have the nicest thermal pools and they're over the north side of the property. Um, Wetland number two had a thermal pool in it later that the road was going through on some of the uh, That's uh, Bill Kenny's report has a discussion about the thermal pools in there. And the way we have the road laid out, um, this is what in three and what in four, we're coming to the southwest, we're nowhere near the front pools. And even here, what in two, we're on the south side, we're nowhere near the front pools. So that's a positive if you will. Um, and if you folks want, I could try and get someone from Tyler Dorsen to his office the next week and talk about what I'm afraid. But if you're going on schedule, he'll go out to Rock Lake out there. The, uh, along that line, I don't know if Bill ha Kenny has any photos. Or if any can be acquired for those members that are not able to physically walk the site. We, we do have we have the aerials that we have so we have aerials, we have photos. We did aerials. actual photos, you know. So not photos, okay. aerials. Uh, aerials. So that could be helpful. So in lieu of doing a field walk for some members, they can actually see the particular wetland that's being discussed. Or in lieu of that, Bill might have photos of what that type of wetland looks like, even though it's not the exact wetland. I'm thinking of my chair. Yeah. And so okay, here, here's what you would expect to find as well. And that's just the helpful uh, little piece of for the record. So we're going to get notified of the apple as each piece is acquired or developed, et cetera. If there's anything on those particular parcels, we're going to have to find oh, yeah. problem and get approved. So what we're talking about is strictly for the roadway and the adjacent areas. The impact of the road will take all the way through. And that's our main concern now. Like I say, you're going to be able to present any wetlands in any area that we're not disturbing the going year, but the right. development that comes in that does, they'll have to, for instance, so many properties that's developed, they're gonna have to come into you and say, this is what we're doing. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, but it's we're only talking about the roadway. Just, road just, just to put the roadway, the right the right the wetlands of the roadway impact is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. It's just the impact. I, I have a question. Um, Joe Riley, by the way. Joe Riley. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, we're pretty much on these plans filling in wetland eight. Uh, wetland three is directly above it. Does that does that uh, flow into wetland eight? No, wetland three goes up. North, and there's uh, actually a portion of Lake Lake Brook that comes down here and goes into the back of the pond. And that's where it drains? It drains to that, and it follows the Lake Lake Brook uh, drainage quarter down to the river ground. Okay, and so and you're going to mitigate this wetland bait and just fill it in, or have you said something about a uh, retention pond? Was it well, we're going to do all the mitigation down in one spot over here along the Sherman property because the soil seems most conducted to it over there. Okay. Um, but we do have a stormwater basin that's going in near wetland eight that also could be planted up with wetland plants and things, and it wouldn't be larger than wetland eight. But we had counted it as, as the mitigation, we just were treating it as a stormwater facility for, for right a second. I see. 
Okay, okay, page six in this shows pretty good little diagrams of the yeah, I didn't get to that yet. Yeah. So you're, just, you're just getting it now. Yeah. But all yeah. the all of the the plans are all coordinated with the wetland report. So he's got a pretty detailed write up for every wetland and what's in there. And I'm sure he's got photographs and we have photographs. And I think I could check, but I, I believe SCPC did a drone flight of the whole court. Just the other year, you know, they, they, they did very well. I mean, somebody did a draw, but, and I'm not sure. I give ball call and one call. Like yeah, I could get that too. Probably if anybody wants it. I mean, it's it's yeah. actually neat because I remember they were flying up and down the corridor. It's, it, you're going past the dog park, you're showing the right path, you're showing a lot of that would probably be the issue. Nice things in the future. That's I'm just trying to picture where you're going to come in into 108 and Mel's Rock Road and the dog park. Where it's going to cross because you got the condos there on the left. They trap for the eliminating the last part of Bell's Rock to become one road. He's on right. Then you have that new subdivision, well, fairly new subdivision, to right the right and then to the left of those the condos. I forget the name of them. So you're going to kind of come in. in it's between. going to come in past well, past Grace Road, of course. And then it comes in, hits what is now Mel's Rock. There'll be a T intersection there, am I correct? They're right, probably. Bell's Rock will cut into that actually. Yeah, probably somewhere just to the just to the south of where the driver is for the dog park. Mills Rock will tee into this thing, and then this thing will come in and, and go right to the, yeah. the so behind the Gravestone. Yes. Or the two where the lake and the uh, little pond is over there. Yeah. Trap. Yeah. The yeah, other road, right. yeah. Mills Rock will run into uh, Constitution, not vice versa. Right. Uh -huh. right. That'll be the master yeah. road going through, connecting to some Fort Summerfield, going up through, whereas uh, another is going to be the cross section, so you won't be coming out to 108 on those rock. But that's that 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 work is not part of this application. Right, that right, is a separate right. application for that road. But when those two pieces are put together and in, uh -huh. then you have a nice place where all the truck deliveries can go down the main road. You're not trying to get down Mel's Rock. Road and and that, road. And that road, yeah. even without going all the way to 10, it's going to have a tremendous impact. By just yeah. taking the traffic off of 108 and rather than having to go down Mills Rock, right. go over this way. I mean, Mills Rock is a nice road, but it's not meant for heavy traffic like right. that, truck right. traffic. So it'd be nice to get the trucks off of Mills Rock and down this road right through. So it's certainly going to be a benefit to everyone. <coughs> Terry, this was that section. This, that's probably the most important next section. You, you, Terry, you mentioned the uh, water quality basin. Is is it also to provide just for water quality, or is, or is that also have a detention function? It's a dual dual, okay. dual function. Because with the six acres of, of roadway, the uh, and since it drains all to Barry Brown Brook downtown Center Street, that some of the water course has some some issues, so it will uh, it be uh, ameliorating some of that. Uh, yeah, pay the so the goal is to try and minimize the amount of additional water going to carry around. We all know it's not. And I've lived with all these years coming down by Center Street, which we yeah. don't want to. You know, we'd like to see the tension back there. And then uh, my last question I think I have right now is uh, could you describe that grass whale drainage uh, benefits over some of the traditional techniques? Oh, it, yes. Um, well, like down here at Bridgeport Avenue, uh, instead of doing a, a pipe to pipe connection, get to this pipe going down uh, to the brook, we have a grass swale going in along the state right away. They've been, they're, we're doing some lane widening for turning lanes to get in, the, in and out of the road, too. But we would be doing a, a, a hydrodynamic separator to take out oil and grease and sand and that type of thing. But then going to a grass filter strip to close those down. And all on the road on both sides, on the uphill side and downhill side, we have grass trails on both sides of the road. They catch runoff coming off the cotton fill slopes on each side. So the extent where we can, we can't do it right off the edge of the road because we have 9% grade. It's just too steep to do a grass trail directly off the road. But where we can, we try to have these vegetated BMPs that the DEP has been recommending. Um, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll landscape this, and th this one's not hatched, but we'll landscape those detention basins so that they're they actually storm water wetlands. They're, they're in the and the storm water running down that road, where is that going to be collected? Oh, we have catch basins all on the road. Oh, okay. The road itself. 
All right. And um, your manholes, you mentioned, so it's not it's not just grass. What I'm saying is that on a steep grade, though, you're going to get, you know, uh, if, you know, if you have a retention pond at the bottom, is that what it is? Or well, right? we're doing we're doing multiple ones. We have uh, one here that's like up on the top of the Moss property, so it's it's in a good spot. Right. And we have another one down here on the bottom Sherman property that's a steep rock slope, so it comes down to that, and there's a nice flat area we can spread it out and build a berm around it. Okay. So we have one there, and we may have to put in some other ones too. I don't know. Um, but right now, this, this what we have those two is our main. So, so the, the slope coming out from from uh, Bridgeport Avenue up over that uh, the nine the nine percent grade that you're starting out with there, right? That's where it starts off because you got your last rock there. That uh, is going to be a short enough section where it's not going to affect the. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, you're not gonna, are you going to get a lot of runoff? Uh, and, and the entrance, no, probably not that much from that. And that we're going to put in pipes to take that and carry that down to the road. So you are right. okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I said. We're 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 going to yeah, upgrade. Right. We're going to upgrade yeah. where there's an existing right. 15 inch pipe going down here. That'll be a bigger pipe when we're all done. Oh. So, okay. So we're we're doing a mix. So we're trying to we're going to have plenty of pipe and drainage, so it won't be. Hard for public works to own and maintain, and we'll do grass wells and vegetated PMPs wherever we can put them in. That was going to be my next question: the maintenance. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're sad, I guess. Uh, uh, you're satisfied with the way that is. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Technical question. I, with Michelle up there. Uh, how Come here. Can, you, is, can she hear us? Yeah, yes. I'm oh. here. Okay, I didn't know if you had any questions, Michelle. Nope. I'm probably <laughs> one of the few people that has walked some of that property in the past, many years ago. And it is a rough piece of property. It sure is. But it's worth developing compared to some of the pure parcels that are being developed today. You're worried about rock. I mean, they're, they're making rock cuts that are. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like the biggest issue is the rock cut. Not really, not really. I, I don't know if that was a problem. Sure. I mean, there's um, nothing we, compared to the rock cut. Yeah, that's yeah. what some people well, yeah. Look yeah. at the one down yeah. on the yeah. one yeah. end. I mean, yeah. that just up there is bigger than the one down here. Yeah. Okay. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Right. No, we'll yeah. come yeah. down to 90%. Okay. And, the, and the cut up on the, on the top is, is 14 feet. And that's probably the, the, the deepest point of the whole cut, a little bit more than the bottom part, but not much more though. It's not much more. So it's really less than what you see at all the other places that have been approved by the so it's, it's really, you're getting a, a whole series of bridges through here that each one's got its own little challenge to it. Um, John, this is Ken Nappy. How are you? Hey, John. Ken. Yeah. Just to let the record show, I came in at 424 to the meeting. Did you hear me? Yeah. Yes, thanks, Ken. Did you have a question? In and out. Anyways, I don't have any questions. I'm familiar with the site and I've looked at the plans. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, Michael Lombardi, and yes. I'm new to the, uh, the uh, commission here. So I just have, and excuse my questions if they've already been answered, but I did hear most of the answers already. One of the things I was going to talk to you about was facilities, you know, telephone, electric, gas, you said it's all, all going to be, all all be underground. So all all underground, all the way up. So it's going to be all underground all the way up. And it, I, I say that, I say that, but the first section, Depending on UI cooperation with other, uh, that's not been determined yet what they would do from Bridgeport Avenue up to. But the, the development itself, the Moss property, will be all on the ground. Put it in the ground. And, so from that and then, so how many conduits do you put in for like telecommunications? And things like whatever that? they need. I mean, whatever they need. Most people are putting in redundancy and putting in extras. In fact, like they did down the canal, UI did their line. I think they added a couple extra because once they're there, they're putting in a mass block of concrete. Confidence in it, they make sure they've got extra ones for the future. 
Okay. Uh, because yeah, everything's sized by their own, but we we, we don't have any structure. Oh, any I'm, sure. No, I'm sure, but yeah. you know, there's so many options now with frontier, with cable. That's with, you know, you don't want to see your road constantly being dug. It won't be dug up. The this road should not ever be have to be dug up. Oh, okay. I wouldn't think so. Of course, you break the water line, you're going to dig it up. Oh, sure. But sure, as sure. far as additional piping or something, no, there should not be. It will all be planned to take care of everything that's going to go in there. And if it wasn't, it would be off the road. Okay. Um, again, being new and going through a road, going through wetlands, um, with heavy rains and things like that, is there any, what's the probability that the water will go across the road? Or, well, the, the designer right won't. No, well, I, I figured I'd ask, you know, because, uh, you know, being in the middle of wetlands with the additional rains and everything we've been getting lately, you know, is this in a 100 year floodplain or? Actually, no. None, none, none of this project is in a 100 year floodplain, and the FEMA maps stopped us a little short of Burning Ground Brook for some reason. Um, it's actually quite high. What you are going to see is normal runoff that. Needs to get picked up with storm drains. All drains will be designed according to the city of, San, uh, city of Shelton uh, requirements for the 25 year storm. Uh, the DOT normally designs for a 10 year storm, which is a slightly smaller storm, but in this case, I think since it's picking up Shelton drains, we'll have everything designed for the 25 year storm. And the detention, we will check the calcs for the two, five, 10. 50 and 100 year storms for the, for the sizing of the stormwater basins. And did you say that you tested the groundwater there? No, we didn't. We have not tested groundwater there. Okay. Um, Are you going to? No, no it's really, I think it's each development might have to, but we don't, we don't get involved in that. Involved in that. What about, um, and again, you know, um, I don't know what you use uh, on the city roads. For ice and things like that. Is there any impact on from that and then running off into the wetlands and doing the damage to the wetlands? Well, like most communities, we have to rely on certain amount of salt to prevent construction and to avoid that until they come out in a better way. Gotcha. Um, I, I've seen some of the other options that they've used, but the last of that, no. Right now, we're using straight salt. I think it seems to be the best way to minimize how much you do. I put on it. You don't want to load up with sand. That's probably the worst thing because that's what floods everything up. So we're using less and less sand today than we did years ago. Okay. As uh, somebody that's been on staff for quite some time here, I can attest to that. And there are all the DIC agents have pros and cons. <clears throat> um, but the traditional sand treatment has probably the most visual impact because it actually just overloads in some areas the some of these more smaller sensitive uh, wetland areas. So for some period of time now, uh, the city in particular has been, you know, scaling back on sand as they've tried some other, the other product. And, and, you know, we also went years back into a sump in each basin also to accumulate any, any runoff that comes. Where years ago, the theory was just run the pipe smooth right through the bottom of the basin and let it all go out to the whatever. Then they changed and came up with a sump below the pipe level, outflow level, so that it accumulates, sand will settle out from there, and then as needed, they're cleaned up. And the state is very hot on that right now, while forcing everyone to get it into a storm has become a big thing. And one of the policies that this commission has had for over two decades now is uh, the implementation of four foot sums where possible. They're not advocating blasting to get a four foot sum, and some of the subdivisions in particular, they've implemented that four foot sump. And I don't know if that's become, you know, a, a universal standard, but what Shelton Wetlands Commission has been using four foot sumps for many years. Yeah, they had a deep to be using it to, to maintain affiliation. It makes it a lot more difficult. And it's not needed as it's not needed as much as it was in the past when we were using more eight to ten thousand yards of sand you know, a year. We're not using those quantities of sand any longer, so you really don't need the sumps as long as they're maintained. Again, it's like anything else, if you don't maintain it. You can have four foot sumps if you don't clean them out, they're no better than an 18 inch sump. Yeah. Well, Sean has the vacuum truck, right? Yeah, we have yeah. one vacuum truck, we don't have the basins in town. I mean, it's, it's, 
It's not practical. Well, again, years ago, you had to be out there with sweepers constantly. It's not the same anymore. The roads don't pick it up. I mean, we don't use that kind of sand anymore to make that kind of crop. There should. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Any more questions? Bob? No, no, no. Thank you very much for having a special meeting for us. It's a good job. It's nice to see you the first time. Right out this year. Let's see how it works. Yeah. 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 To yeah. accept the plans as yeah, well, the clock starts to have to as a formal acceptance, but it's, there's nothing wrong with making a motion to accept this for review. So, if you want to do that, I'd accept these plans for review and then a second. Thank you. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Now we need a motion okay. to. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Nice seeing you, Michelle. <laughs> and of course, John, you know that well. Paul Perry, anything you need, if you need any additional.